Mate, have we got another sick review for Good Day? Oi, I'm going to read a couple out. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so, six, and dribblers, 64 you know. five star reviews, punters and dribblers, which is a fuckload already rolling in. This one came across my desk recently and I fucking loved it. And Shout I just, out to everyone who has got around the Good Day. Um, we very much appreciate it. And. As much as we appreciate it, I hope, and it sounds like from these reviews, you're getting the same benefits from it that we are. Listen to old mate here. He's five stars, top product. Was genuinely surprised at the ingredients list for the price point with this supplement. Good day have not skipped on quality. Do we ever skip on quality, punters and dribblers? Very difficult to find a product like this on the market. Recommending to anyone who will listen. This isn't some bush league product, punters and drillers. We've partnered with the best in the fucking business, all right? And they've delivered quality for you, the punter and the dribbler. That's right. So that you can turn your fucking lives around and start making some healthy, sustainable decisions. Pretty simple. That's it. Now, I'm going to read a couple more. Is that all right, It's Tom? completely fine by me, buddy. Should I read out the one that we read on Bloke the other Fuck day, yeah. just in case some people missed case. it? This is an absolute... Fucking doozy. I'm padding whilst I look. Begoodhealth.com.au is where you go to get your good day. Uh, you can get it for one month, two months. You can get a subscription. The uh, the code is dribblers, and you will get um, you'll get a discount. Twenty percent. Use it. Twenty percent discount. Life changer. Five stars. Have a go at these puns, dribblers. I cannot express how much this has changed my life. My wife, my wife has even noticed a huge change in my moods. I'm a father of four working hard and trying to be a good husband when life really got on top of me. It's been a tough, it has been tough the last two years until I tried Good Day. Along with a change of diet, I feel great. I wish you could eat well as well, punters and dribblers. You can't just eat like shit. Good Day will not offset eating feces, okay? Like you have to <laughs> eat well. <laughs> But it will fucking help. Listen to this. Not so tired, happier, more energetic. I cannot thank Good Day enough and would recommend to anyone. There you go. Everyone's saying, i tell you what a lot of the reviews are saying, Tom, as just as we can just give a, more of an insight into how it can help the punter and the dribbler. People are saying their 3pm slumps are gone, 2pm mm. slumps are gone. Every motherfucker gets slumped in the afternoon. You yeah. crash, you fall off a, a, a metaphorical cliff or an energy cliff, really. Good day takes that away, baby. You'll plough through all day long. Yep. So get your good day, begoodhealth.com.au, and change your life. You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. <laughs> What's up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to the Hello Sport Podcast. I'm unqualified opinion and unwavering bias. Eddie, take over for me for one second. Good to be here, punters and dribblers. Good to be here, Monday morning. Uh, not too early, not too late. Don't know what Tom's doing, but it's probably manly related, you'd imagine. Obviously, it's the fucking year of the bird. We all know that. Great to be here Monday morning celebrating another win. Fuck yeah, man. Year of the bird and all that. Year of the bird. Fuck you. Fuck the lot of you. <clears throat> We're here to gloat this morning. And if you don't like it, you can go and get fucked. Because when you have a famous win... And it fell off. When you have a famous win at home in front of a sold out crowd, Brookvale Oval. They're saying, I mean, some people are saying there was 40,000 there yesterday. I mean, that won't be reported in the official numbers, but such was the groundswell of support in the area for the club that people were jumping the fence, mate. So I'm, th I'm thinking 40,000, 50,000 there yesterday. Yep. Absolutely heaving. Absolutely heaving. And. For the boys to turn up, not only for each other, Tom, but for the peninsula, mm. for the community, mm. for the people of Manly and surrounding suburbs, to turn up at home in front of 50,000, take on the chooks who everyone's beating their cocks to, don't think they're doing that anymore, but everyone goes, oh yeah, Roosters, good win in Las Vegas, so win the comp. No, mate. It's not how it works. Because to win the comp, you've got to go through great teams. And Manly proved themselves yesterday to be not only a great side, but the premiership front runners, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're now the name on everyone's lips. Yeah. We put a line through the roosters. They're done. Easy. Thanks for coming. Their season's over. It's all over. Pack it up. Think about the amount of Seagulls rhetoric that's going on right now 
around the water coolers of this great nation. Yeah. Jeez, you see Luke Brooks? Fucking hell, he's a player. That kid can play the rescue dog. Rescue dog? All you need to do with rescue dogs is give them a nice home. It's pretty simple. He's as happy as I've ever seen a man. Yeah, out tail there. wagon. He's a pig in shit, Tom. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a pig in shit, Luke Brooks. Loving his football. Loving Tom. his football. He's loving his rugby league football. He's running again. Because he didn't run for a while. He didn't run, mate. He didn't run. He couldn't run. What about Brooks yesterday getting the ball out of the back of a bit of uh, Jake Trebojevic shape? Mm. Okay. Gets it on to fucking Tommy Teller to just dominate. Like, yeah. I don't think Jake, I mean, I don't think that Luke Brooks has been given the ball out the back of shape ever. Well, certainly not since like schoolboy footy when he was playing for, you know, the national side. I'm talking first grade rugby league here, Tom. I'm first talking, grade shape. I'm talking NRL shape. That's what I'm talking. I mean, with all due respect, schoolboy footy goes all right, but it's not NRL shape, is it? Well, it's better than the Tigers. Well, that's right. Well, that's why he hasn't been seeing. He hasn't. He hasn't seen NRL shape because he's playing for what is essentially a New South Wales Group Thirteen ish club. Yep. Masquerading as an NRL club, which we all know is a complete fib. Yep. No, look, you're right. You're right, and um, it's just good to see the rescue dog. In full rescue dog mode, I know that, you know... Well, he's not a rescue dog anymore. He's just a dog. Well, listen, he is still a rescue dog because he was rescued. You can't... And I, I don't think even Luke wants to erase that from his from his past. Like, you are the sum of your experiences. Yes. And true. he is only able to do what he's done today because of, the, because of the mistreatment that he experienced at the hands of some poor owners, some evil owners who treated him badly, well, you kept could- him chained up. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. And he is a rescue dog because of that experience. However, he's only playing good rugby league now because he's in a loving, caring environment. Yes, but he wasn't in that before. So this is where you're seeing the dichotomy, or maybe that's not the right word. Juxtaposition? The juxtaposition of what a dog that's being mistreated goes through and then one that's allowed to be a dog. And that's what we've seen with Luke. And to say we're proud of him, is an understatement. To say that, you know, certainly not that we were wrong because it wasn't about being wrong or right when we signed into the club. It wasn't about that. It was about perception. And we were scared of a dog that might bite you. We had an emotional response. Yep. And as we've probably almost, all, you know, almost certainly talked about on this show before, an emotional response is to be human. Correct. To be emotional is to be homo sapien, punters and dribblers. Mm. We are hardwired through our ancestral fucking journey and experiences on this planet to have emotional responses. Ooh. I am not a single-celled fucking organism no. just existing. Mm-mm. An amoeba. I'm not just... Eh. I'm not algae or algae, okay? Algae is a weird pronunciation <laughs> I haven't heard before. <laughs> it felt right. Yes. <laughs> okay. No. I'm homo sapien. Yeah. And that not only allows me, but dictates that I have emotional responses. And when I see a rescue dog that may or may not bite me coming to my club, I think immediately he's going to give us all rabies. Yeah. But what's funny is, and sometimes it's, you know, the book by the cover sort of thing. It's like, just because they're a scary looking dog from an ex- like a scary environment, like... You he wasn't what? scary Not looking. scary looking. But, but he looked infected with shit. Well, yeah, he looked like problematic. Yes. He looked problematic. He looked ill. And I don't mean problematic in the way that people use that word these days. I mean, prob- like not- No, old school problematic. Old school problematic. Not like 2019 to 2021 problematic. No, no, like, no. Oh, you're, you're, the no, shoes no, no. you're wearing are like offending me. No, 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 not that. Not offensive problematic. Like, you know- Old school problematic. Old school problematic. So, th- but then what you, you you put your hand out in front of his in front of his little nose and let, let him, him sniff. sniff you. Yeah, and then you feel his wet little nose give you a kiss, and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. this dog just wanted love. Yeah, it wanted licks. That's all he wanted. He wanted Hugs loves and kisses, and kisses and woodges and scratches behind the ear. Yeah, yeah. That's and a all good it feed. was. A good feed. Roll on your back and let me fucking rub your belly, That's sort it. of stuff. That's it. So, 
Good luck, rest of the competition, because we've got a fucking Luke Brooks on his back getting his belly tickled by a couple of fucking real loving dads. Uh, so the competition in huge, huge trouble. Uh, something I wanted to talk about quickly, Edward, because no other team in the competition has what we have in the form of one Homole Olakawatu, who I would argue if you sent me to a fucking high court of this land or to the Hague or wherever the highest court is, I could argue highest court. that that was the not a knock on. That was not a knock on. It was a try, but whatever. Fuck it. He, I don't know, because I'm not a doctor, but this was like we were eyeballing it from the Movers and Shakers lounge. We, at were, the, close. At we, were, we were close. We were close to him. Pretty close. Looked like he dislocated his knee and then was like trying to put pressure on it and his leg kept collapsing. And so he was like trying to like push his kneecap back into place. Or his whole knee. Or his whole knee. He might have had his whole knee. I don't know how it's possible, but like. But like roll with it. Yeah. And well, like does, don't, don't your bones go into your knee? So he was putting something back in. That's, he was trying to put something back together. Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses, all the king's men sort of shit. Trying to put Hamole back together again. Well, but except Hamole was trying to do it himself. Yeah. He was like, fuck all the king's men. Yeah, and all the king's horses. I'm doing this shit myself. And then a trainer came along and had to help him because Hamole obviously doesn't have the medical capabilities required. Like, he can grunt he can grunt a kneecap back into place. Yeah, he can. But it might fuck him for an but extended is that, amount is of time. But is that for the best? Yeah, so let's get a king's horses and king's men in there. Mm. Puts his knee back in, and we're like, okay, well, he's he's obviously just going to fucking go off the field now. And then, no, no because he's bigness times thickness squared, mm. just jogs back into the lineup. A little bit limp, a little bit ginger. Listen, he was, he was, it was a ginger jog, Tom. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and tell Porky Pies. It was a ginger <laughs> jog, but the kid was jogging. After, again, based on the eyeball test, him putting his knee back together mm. by himself after carrying 50 men, 50 metres. Yeah. Like to score a try for the better, taken off. For the, exactly. For I don't want to make it about refs half. either. That, no, I'm not going to make it about That refs. little fucking referee was, I don't think, I don't think he had his best game. Now, it's funny because obviously, you, you know, bias comes from, you know, this is the home of unwavering bias, right? Correct. Not to mention unqualified opinion, but... I saw that game and I saw a referee that didn't know how to referee rugby league. But then I spoke to Roosters fans who saw the same game and thought that he was giving us the fucking rub of the green. I'm like, what fucking game were you watching? Rub of the green? Yeah. I don't think so. I saw a ref out of his depth. I saw a ref that couldn't swim standing in the deep end. Okay? Yep. When he should have been in the kiddie pool. Yeah, his toes couldn't touch the ground. He and should have he been in the one, under. the water where the water goes up to your ankles, splashing around, you can't drown, that sort of Filled shit. Filled with kids' piss. That's right. Urine and logs. That's where he belonged. Yep. And he was in the wrong pool yesterday. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Just want to touch on Hamali briefly before we can move on to uh, the game more generally. If Hamale Olakawatu doesn't get picked for Origin this year, I'm not here. He is too big and thick and strong and powerful and too much of a rugby league presence to be ignored for any longer. Mm. The man is special. He's also terrifying. So like, scary. Like everyone, you just can tell that any opposition are like, fuck, I don't want to have to Imagine marking that guy. You can fuck that right off. Yeah. It's also just like, he's, he's a scary, again, I'm sure he's a sweetheart. Don't know him all that well, though well, he did dap us up on the plane after Vegas. Nice listen, to see him. Great listen, to see him. listen, he's a friend of he's ours. He's a friend. You know, he likes our photos from time to time. Yeah, exactly. He seems like a really, really sweet man. Sweet, I'm humble, talking, nice man. I'm talking he about the... scary. I'm talking about the Hamole that's crossed the chalk, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. That's different. Back alley Hamole. Back alley Hamole, battlefield Hamole, yeah. in the trenches Hamole. Yeah. That guy is fucking terrifying. Yeah. And I am not ashamed to say... Not ashamed to say that if I was told that I was marking Hamole, I'd have a sickie. I'm not ashamed to no. say. You can judge me. You can go, oh, you're weak, you're not up to it. Sure, fine. That's your opinion. My opinion is, wouldn't mark him. No. Not with a 10-foot pole, Tom. Mm -mm. I wouldn't mark him with a 10-foot pole. Not for my life, mate. Now, we had a, and obviously Manly winning was the icing or the cherry on top of the fucking Well, it was the cake. Cake. Whatever. It was the cake. It was the cake, but it was also the icing on top of the cake. Because the day was quite a nice day. We had a nice day. We had a lovely day. Got out to the Four Pines Brewery. Never been there before. Phenomenal establishment. 
Good vibes. Good vibes. Just a lot of... Uh, a lot, lot of, of fucking pro-manly rhetoric. Well, a lot room. of pro-manly rhetoric. There's a couple of Roosters fans slinking about. They allow the opposition's team to... to team, like, supporters to come in, but just know that, like, if anything kicked off, then there's just going to be a sea of maroon and white bashing Roosters. And I don't even mean really kick off, but you know what I mean when I say it. Metaphorically. Metaphorically. There'd be abuse hurled. Well, listen, they're behind enemy lines. We allow you to become behind, it, behind enemy lines because I think... Part of it is that we want to show off how great the club is mm. and what we're all about. Mm. And you, of course you can come behind enemy lines to watch your own team lose. Of course you can do that. No, that's fine. Wouldn't. That's actually, we like that. That's like sadomasochistic sort of shit. Like yeah. BDSM, like, you know, people like get whipped. Like Roosters fans like to come and watch their team get whipped. Well, that's us. right. It's, 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 it's ball gag stuff. Yeah, yeah it is. You know, um, it's Trent Robertson. It's Trent Barrett be- begging for the tenth. Correct. That's what it is. Well, speaking of speaking of Benoit balls, we were remarking in the green room pre-show. Again, something I wouldn't say to the man, but it was just we couldn't help but observe it. Terrell May's ratty. Mm. He had a bit of a Mary Fowler going on in terms of like the millions of different thingos bubbles. But Mary's looks like long hair. Mm. His looks like anal beads hanging off the back of his head. Do you reckon he? Well, I don't think they're big enough. And again, I don't want to... We want to try intimidating characters. So him walking off the field, he's big and thick and he's, you know... But there is a bit of anal bead to that hair. <laughs> there just is. That's all you say. And it's not a personal thing. It's not an attack. No. It's just an observation mm. on what it seems Mary Fowler inspired, yeah. but slightly a little bit more kinky in its in its delivery. You're, you're, you're observing the world around you. That's all it is. And you, see, and you see a kinky cut. <laughs> I see a little bit of a fucking and not not to kink shame either. We're not kink shamers here at Hello Sport. No, we don't. Nor the Shane Keith Productions family more broadly. No, no, no. We don't kink shame. We don't kink shame. If you want to have Benoit balls hanging off the back of your head, power to you. Mm. I hope to see you play Origin one day, sir. I hope you achieve everything you want in your career. Mm. I hope you the can Benoit grow. Balls I hope you are. can grow that out and put them to work bit more length you're gonna need more length and also because it's hair you're probably gonna need to like put some sort of like put something in there it will freeze them <laughs> put them in the freezer yeah put them in the freezer put them in the freezer and they'll go in they'll go they'll pop in right? they'll pop in they'll pop in oh, they'll they pop might in. melt inside though and then just again slop out we're not king shaming terrell mate we're just pointing out that you could argue they do look sometimes a little bit like benoit balls anyway that's just that's by the by. By the by. We we're out at the the Four Pines Brewery. It was fantastic. Shout out to Todd and the team for having us. What I did like was when just before game day they get the fucking the like the the band game time going, game time sorry the band like just out of nowhere pops up like trumpet players and saxophonists and drummers and shit and then they just march everyone under the ground. Oh, it's beautiful. It was a vibe. Big vibe. It was a vibe. Manly was fucking on on show yesterday. Yeah, it was. It was best foot forward sort of stuff. Yeah. Best foot forward. And everyone was just in a great mood. I I could feel immediately as I arrived in Brookvale yesterday that we're gonna win. So you could just tell. I There's felt just it. something on the air. There's like an energy. You can yeah. ju- it's 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 palpable. Mm-hmm. And you cannot ignore it. No. So we get a couple into us, the band marches to the stadium. And then we're invited up to another Movers and Shakers Lounge. I know that some people think that there might be a bit of a theme here that, that all we do is go to Movers and Shakers Lounge. We're lands. not. That, that's it's, not it's just it. the last two. No, the it's last, just the last it's just two. just the last two have been but, Movers and Shakers. But that's, and, I, and I also don't want to turn down an invite. No. You know? I think that's rude. It's rude to turn down an invite, right? Because if, if we weren't invited, then we would have been sardined on the hill, ripping and tearing and screaming our little lungs out. As it happened... There was a movers and shakers lounge that extended a hand to us and yes. said, would you like to move and shake? To which we said, yes. Yes, we will. Again, because we don't turn down invites and no. nor should you, punters and dribblers. If someone does you a nicety, okay, you go, thank you very much, sir. I or humbly accept. Put your hands up like You're this. humble. you got to be humble. And you go, I am humble. I am being But hum- I do accept. I am being humbled and I accept. Now, 
the great Justin Scope Horror was in there as well. He's Club a legend. humble guy. He's a humble Another guy. Another humble man. Who had his hands up, okay, saying, yes, please, thank you, sir. Beaver Menzies was in there, dear close personal friend. He was Just, in there for a moment, but he likes to work from box to box, shaking hands. Well, he's got it. He's, he's on the move. But there is no coincidence that when Beaver came and sat down with us for a moment to say good day and to humbly say good day at that, that we went over for a try. You know what I mean? Like it's called the Beaver effect. The Beaver effect. And they you start they're studying it. They don't know what it exactly is. It's like Murphy's Law, except it's called the Benzies effect. Uh, the Menzies effect, rather. The Menzies law. The Menzies law, which is basically when Menzies comes around us. Comes around us specifically. Yeah. We score rugby league tries. Tries are scored. Pretty easy. Yeah. Pretty, pretty easy to understand. Yeah. Well, it's easy to observe what happens. It's not easy to, to explain, explain what happens. What's yeah, happening? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like that's quantum, like that's quantum, like quantum stuff. Mechanics. You know. So that was really nice. Again, you know, do I sometimes pinch myself? When Steve used to. Menzies used to with Beaver Eye, Beaver like he's Beaver's too close one. now. I know he's still too close, but I can't help when Beaver Menzies comes and sits down that I'm not just a little bit like Jesus, titty fucking Christ. That's Beaver Menzies, yeah, of try in his last game of rugby league ever in the 2008 grand final, 40 nil. 40 fucking nil, that guy, that headgear. Also a really, really nice guy. Just a good, honest, nice Australian guy. Just a nice guy. The sort of guy that you, you'd be happy to fucking see marry your daughter. Now, he's obviously probably 50. But, the, but, but, that's, it's, but you it's, get what I'm the, saying. It's the point you're trying to make. It's the point. I'm not saying literally. It's not literally. If he was, this isn't a Hugh if he was 20 years younger, right, I'd be like, marry my sister. Yeah, and see, I mean, again, we still would be too old to marry my daughters if he was 20 years younger. But I, again, it's the point you're making. But if he was born four, Three, four years, years ago, ago, right, and then he becomes the man he is now, then, then it now makes a lot of talking, sense. Now, that, now that's a literal truth. Yes. As opposed to a point. And I agree with both of them, though, just yeah. so you know. No, I think so. I will, I mean, it'd be hard to argue, though, wouldn't no, it? No, it would be. It'd be impossible to argue. we just said. It's just, it's nice to know that a club legend's actually a legend as yes. well. Yes. I think that's where I'm coming from, is that, and I can't speak for other clubs, but I assume other clubs have club, club legends that aren't legends just because they're other clubs, you know what I mean? Yeah, but not correct. apparently. No, no, no. Our club legends are all legends <laughs> um, on and off the field. Cliffy Lyons. <laughs> Saw him in the fucking Saw car Cliffy. park. He was a legend too. Just fucking... Now, now Cliffy definitely doesn't know the fuck we are. No, he doesn't. And and, but I didn't pretend that he did. No, neither. Oh, we were just like... We were just waving we were at Cliffy Lyons. We at Cliffy... After a wait, famous wait, manly so, win. Wait, so Cliffy Wines walked past, you don't wave at him? You're a fucking Manly Seagulls fan. Uh, and Cliffy Lines of, I believe, two-time Daly M winner fame, Dior that, please, Cody, walks past you to after his, a famous manly win to his, to his personal parking spot, which he has earned. <laughs> <laughs> right next to the stadium. In fact, I would argue probably 50 steps from where we were sitting. Correct. But Cliffy gives a wave. All and he fucking, gives acknowledgement. All and God. he says, g'day. Cliffy, bone on bone. No cartilage left in those None. knees. He's squeaking when he goes <laughs> past us. He's squeaking. He needs WD-40, but yeah. he won't take it because he's Cliffy Lions. That's right. Two Dally M's. Two Dally M's. Thank you very much. There you as go. As he squeaks past us to his fucking big, fuck, what was it, like a Raptor or something? Oh, he was driving a nice car. Looked like a big ute. It was like a, was like a manly car, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, big fucking manly seagulls, but like a big masculine car. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. correct. But so, uh, uh, just a great day for the club. Perfect temperature. Not yeah, too hot, not nah. too cold. Drinks were flowing. Goldilocks zone. Food was flowing. We uh, had Willie B, Ollie Arch, Jarge, two Roosters fans, you know. But no, but it's like, it, I like bringing Roosters fans along because yeah. you can just give them shit the yeah, whole you time. Can. And, and that we did. Shout out to Ed Liston for being a fucking coward. Yeah. Scurrying out of the ground after the game like a weak yeah, dog. Yeah, he's like, oh, my dad's a Manly fan. I had to drop him home. I'm like, I bet your oh, dad you had to drop have, him home, did I you? bet your dad of Manly fan fame would have loved to have come to the pub after the game, seen the bloody, seen the, everyone getting up and about. You're weak, Ed. Just own, own your losses next time, mate. Mm. It's pretty simple. Mm. Own your losses. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the random dribbler who came up to us at the pub afterwards and he handed me a, like a, a note. But it was like a Kino piece of paper, whatever the mm. fuck that's called. 
and all it said was hi Tom on it with a smiley face and he just walked off. Yeah, it was nice. It, it was, was it was I didn't know what the fuck I was getting and that was it. And I was like, okay, that was nice. Boogie Hotel was pumping yesterday. It was pumping. 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 It was pumping. Absolutely fucking heaving yeah, post dribblers ever, and like because it's nice to it's nice catching up with dribblers generally, right? But because you know we are, I guess, like most of our audience, uh, most of the dribblers are just rugby league fans generally. When you see a big group of dribblers, it's usually from a broad range of fucking fan bases. When you go into a the Brookie Hotel after a famous manly win. It is just filled to the brim with Manly Seagulls dribblers, and so it's actually quite nice to just be in there and all be able to just scream together. Yes, yeah, scream and, and hug and kiss. Hug and kiss and yeah. yip and yahoo and get up and about and rip on charge, which is what happened. Which is exactly what happened. So it was a fucking perfect, perfect Sunday. Mm. You can't spend a, a better Sunday than that. No. Then you might go and have a, some, some McDonald's with your mates and a couple of darts, and then you go home. That's what it's all about. That's what it's, that's like. That's how you cap off a great Sunday. Well, that's what, that's almost like, that's what the you Anzacs, don't have, that's you what don't, the Anzacs fucking fought that's what, for. That's what, freedom. That's what freedom looks like. That's freedom. That's what freedom looks like. Maccas and darts with your mates after a famous win. That, punters and dribblers, is freedom. And if you're a yank listening, it's not guns, brah. No. Nah. It's Brookvale heaving. It's another two points. Thank you, sir. It's saying good day to your mate Beaver Menzies and Cliffy Lyons. Yeah. It's eating fucking McDonald's till the cows come home. It's, it's pumping it's, darts. It's celebrating it's with It's rescuing dribblers. Luke Brooks. It's rescuing Luke Brooks. It's going to the fucking Brookie Hotel. It's screaming for fucking 80, 80 minutes yeah. at uh, hurling abuse at the opposition and celebrating your own team. That's freedom. It's okay. playing pokies after the game. It's watching your mate slip fucking huge coin through it's there watching because he because he wants pounded. to play up to the crowd yeah. because he's a because he's a bit like that he's a bit yeah. of a clown he's yeah. a bit of a joker watching Jarch try and impress twenty year old dribblers twenty two year old dribblers with great heads of hair yeah phenomenal heads of and hair and great colouring yeah yeah and you're just a good energy about and it. a great energy and because Jarch just just smashing the pokies and just not knowing when to stop because he wanted the crowd. He wanted the crowd and he wanted glory in the face of the crowd. But, I mean, it was just another defeat for him it was yesterday. another defeat. He gets, he gets, butt, he gets uh, butt pounded by Manly Seagulls then by the Pokies. I mean, it was just a bad day generally for him from a loss, win-loss perspective. Mm. That's freedom, okay? That's freedom. That's what freedom looks like to, yeah. to us. Yeah. That's rugby league freedom. That's rugby league freedom. Okay, if you think freedom is shooting an AK-47 at a fucking cutout of a man in a dingy dark little shit old fucking bunker somewhere range. then that's that's fine for that's you that's fine for you but i i know what i'd prefer to do with my time uh see above i tell you what's freedom uh that america doesn't get freedom is being able to walk around your streets not worried about getting shot yeah that's freedom that's real freedom freedom's also eating fucking what did i have yesterday maybe five or six fucking party pies bro yeah unbelievable five or six soso rolls Okay. Yep. Some of that, there's some weird Asian, like, skewery sort of meat thing. Lamb and chicken. Yep. Skewers. And then one of those samosas. I had three or four of those. What would you call them? Are they I call a samosa? it a samosa, but I don't know what a samosa well, is. Well, is it a samosa or is it more of a... Uh, curry puff? Uh, like a curry puff. But it was meant to be Japanese themed. Which is why the first thing I ate been a curry puff threw me, Tom. Well, it's, if it's a curry puff. And also why party pies wasn't exactly what I, I envisioned. I didn't know that that was... I didn't know I that think, party pies is from Japan. No. I didn't realise that party pies and sausage rolls were Japanese, but there you go. They fucking taste good. The Japanese know what tastes good, so, I mean, I'm not shocked. Yeah, Kinda. they were... Nah. Samosa. I'd say samosa. Yeah. They weren't triangles. They were samosa-y. Pasty? I don't think they were a pasty. I don't know about that. Oh, that looks a bit big. Well, they weren't a pastizzi, I know that. They weren't a pastizzi. No. And why do you know that? Because of the because they what was on the outside, like the the the. What's a pastizzi? Do you know what a pastizzi is? Like that. Oh, that okay. Like that one there. Jesus Christ! I feel like they're. Uh, Look at those pastizzis. Usually get like cheese and spinach and shit. You can have, you can get some really nice pastizzis. God, they're all pretty fucking. Sick Mario's pastizzis. Did you ever put them in the fucking oven? I didn't, mate. Look again. I'm not a huge pastizzi connoisseur. You don't like are you but you strike me as a man who who would who would fucking, you know, house a few of those. You know. I probably would, but I'm not going searching for them. Like if they come to me, 
if I if the universe brings me a pastizzi, but, I, but I'll it, consider but it. But you you strike me as a man that that spends time in the perishable section, the frozen goods section. Uh, no, incorrect. You know, I'm eyeballing a, big... a few pastizzi, no, maybe dude. eyeballing a I couple what, of G breads. Froze, the only frozen thing that I will fuck with really that I'll go looking for is dumplings. Mm. Well, they're all they're all fucking hanging around. Yeah, I know, but I'm but like you a fish I'm not, finger guy. No. <laughs> But when the girls were a bit younger and they used to eat fish fingers and then, you know, you'd eat a little bit of a, a little scraping off the side of the plate, not bad. I'm sure there's very little fish in them, but they aren't bad. Well, it's probably uh, a little bit of a similar situation to when you, Hamish, and Jack Archdale were living with myself, mm-hmm. 177 Keppel. Uh, and we would eat chicken burgers, Tom. Do you remember this? Yeah, I do. Cheeky burgers. And we used to love our cheeky burgers more than life itself, you could argue. Yep. Nothing made me happier than on Tuesday night, Monday night, getting down to Woolies with the boys, Whenever stocking the up. Would roll in. We'd get 50, 60, 70 cheeky burgers, and we'd go home and we'd, we'd take those bad boys to Pound Town. Then one day, Jack Edward Archdale of Ruins It For Everyone fame... Yep. Comes in and goes, look how much chicken's in these. Flip. It was like 3%. No, no, I think it was like 30. Still pretty low. Well, no, it's still low. It's <laughs> shockingly low. Uh, 30 and ruined them for me. Well, it certainly did because you see, the, you see, it's almost like, I'm not going to say what it's almost like, but when something presents as one thing, yes, and then when you properly observe mm. you realize that it's not what it was saying it was yes yeah, so it's not a chicky burg at all no it's not it's it's a burg with some chicken, some chicken in, it. in it and we don't know what the fuck else is in there because <laughs> it was all like big words i can't pronounce that yeah. were in it yeah a lot of lo- a lot of additives and unfortunately for someone who didn't have a job for five years when i was at university just a just a youth allowance guy with a bit of rent assistance sprinkled on top and yeah. maybe some gardening for my late grandmother uh, granny, may she rest in peace. May she rest in eternal peace. In eternal peace. Shout out to you, Aotearoa. I was not able to afford real chicken chicken burgers. No. The price difference, Cody, was insane. Like the cost of real chicken versus f- faux Fake chicken. chicken, or like just a third of chicken. It became completely untenable. Yeah, it did. So we had to start nicking fucking ham out of the deli. We had to look. We did potentially have some thievery in our past, and whilst, well, I'm not condoning it. No, I'm not condoning. All thieving. I'm saying is, although you, you know, Woolworths are price gouge and the punter and the dribbler are out of control these days. All so. we're saying is thirty seven, thirty cents worth of tofu may that sticker may have found its way onto Dude. six or seven kilos of ham. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, proud of it. No, no, no. Some uh, some Kalamata olives. Uh, the small punnet, <laughs> the sticker from that may have found its way onto a couple of kilos of ham. The the olives housed in store. Mm. Oh, in store. Consumed yeah. in store. Well, you consume in store, of course. And then left mm. an empty box somewhere, an mm. empty, empty container. Not condoning it. I'm no. ashamed. <laughs> No, I think that's why we're talking about it. That's it's because it. we are so ashamed, ashamed of how we behaved in our early 20s. It is an early 20s behaviour. We we shouldn't have done it. It's we, we Listen, we were better than that. Yes. Only barely, but we were. We're, we were. Yeah, only slightly better than that, but we should have been better than that. And I'm obviously committed to spending the rest of my life atoning for those sins. I'm atoning. I shop at Woolies Metro now sometimes. You and, know I, I mean? and I pay, and I, and I pay full through the arse. I pay full freight. I pay full freight. You can fucking times full freight by 10, my friend, because yeah. I'm getting my balls ripped yeah. off. You go down and there for fucking five mouth. items and it's 60 bucks. So I've paid back my, I've paid it back. Yeah, we've full. paid back our debt to society. 100%. Well, to them specifically, because yeah. we did shop at Woolies. <laughs> Yeah. We were Woolies guys. Well, listen, we were. Well, it but seemed consider like it was just, the debt paid back. Yeah, no, it's it's paid back. I guess it was just it was probably easier to just to to pull off the heist in the Woolworths for some reason. Well, I think we liked. I think we we knew how they operated, Tom, mm. and we knew we knew the mate. We knew what they we were knew doing. The flaws, but they knew what the, we knew what they were what they were doing to the price of milk. You know, we knew what they were doing to our farmers, and we and we knew some we knew some dairy farmers. Knew Shout some out dairy to Max, farmers. to the great Max Downs, who's now a father. Congratulations, congratulations, Max. bro! What do you have? Uh, he had a girl. Heck now too. he, I knew he was getting his eyeballs ripped out. So we, it was almost we were making a stand. That's what it was. It was a Robin Hood sort of a thing. <laughs> 
yeah, rob from the rich and give to the privileged. Yeah, that's which right. Was us. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like a a modern reimagining of Robin Hood. Yeah, basically, we're taking from corporate fat cats and giving it to people other that, privileged people. Yes, who was ourselves? Yeah, at that, the was, time. that was us. We were poor though. We were poor, but like we obviously were. Poor and privileged. Poor and privileged, yeah, yeah. Because we weren't getting given money. Well, I was getting given money by the by taxpayer. The, by the government, the taxpayer, <laughs> but like not directly from our families. No, 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 certainly not from my family. <laughs> but you could argue... That if things got so, really hairy... <laughs> no, or you could argue that they pay taxes and that tax went, it goes to youth allowance and youth allowance is what I was getting. Well, then t- you could argue that every single person was paying for our... But you could also argue this, puns and dribbles, before you shit down our throats, yeah, don't, that without stuff. youth allowance, without us sustaining us... Our, uh, our bodies with ham yeah. via the great heist of the Kalamata Olive yeah. switcheroo, <laughs> then you wouldn't have dribble and yarn today. That's you it, wouldn't right? have it. Like you can, you dig deep enough, you'll find a moral quandary in anything, all right? So you, sometimes you just need to turn the other way <laughs> and let a little bit of a ham Kalamata Olive heist go unchecked <laughs> because... What you got from that was dribbling yarn. You got the whole fucking thing. All of the universe, the Hello Sport, the Wee Mean Wells, the fucking live streams, the about everything, all that shit. You wouldn't. It's all because of dribbling yarn, and it's all because of the Kalamata Olive. What did you get? Leg ham? Yeah. Switcheroo. Shave leg ham. Yeah, shave leg, primo stuff. Fuck we didn't get yeah. the cheap stuff. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> No, it was comfortably the most expensive item in our trolleys yeah. before the Kalamata <laughs> Olives found its way onto it. <laughs> it then became the cheapest. <laughs> Can't get away with that shit now, though. Mate, well, they got fucking everything there. At well, they got, well, they got weights. They got weights. They but, got we didn't, cam- but we used to we used to go by the... Uh, We'd go with the people. We'd go to the people. We, we thought it, it aroused less suspicion if we, if we chatted up the attendant whilst they're scared. Well, mate, it's... We it were was, like, what? Probably 20 from 20? Yeah. No, we never got... It was fucking the easiest thing in the world. We were... <laughs> we, we sort of took it, though, a little bit like an Ocean's Eleven approach where they walk out the front door. Yes. You know what I mean? They walk out the front door with bags full of money. Because... Like we were just it, going, let's go through... Let's go... This is the way that people won't expect you Self-service is a bit like eyebrows raised and... Yeah. Also, before you start pointing fingers at us, have a look at the fucking data around people going, oh, these avocados, it's avocados, they're fucking onions. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's taking a little bit from You can't them. now, though. Yes, you can. Oh, can you still do it? Fucking oath, you can. I thought there were, like, cameras and shit. Oh, no. They have cameras above you now. Yeah, cameras above you, cameras on your face. And then sometimes if the weight doesn't match, like the... The camera above. Well, above again, again, as I said earlier, I'm, I've uh, I've repented. Is that yeah. the term? Yeah, so yeah. actually, I pay full freight for shit. But I would imagine that you could, if you wanted to, say that those fucking avocados are onions. I don't think like there is nothing more stressful to me now than when you're doing the fucking self service checkout and something goes wrong and you're like, hey, which is every time. I didn't or oh, every single time. But you're like, I'm not doing anything dodgy here, man. Like they come over and they pull out their little card and then they put it, their number in and it resets. And it's straight back in. But I'm always like, hey, this I I feel like anyone there just feels like they're fucking doing something wrong. But it's all weighted now as well. So you wouldn't be able to do the Kalamata Olive no, leg hand no, no, switcheroo. No, no, no. But we didn't do that anyway because we went through the front door, punters and dribblers. Anyway, has this segment gone for too it's long? It's gone for way too long and that's fine. Has. We're not proud of them. We don't condone it. Should we get back to some rugby league? I don't know how we got here. <laughs> I have no idea how we got here. <laughs> Curry puffs. Curry puffs. Curry puffs. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how we got there. So you were going and switching the stickers and the attendant was scanning them and yeah. not realising? Well, because we were having we such... Were no, because we would, we, would, we, would, we would bring on such an engaging conversation that they were scanning on autopilot. <laughs> there, was, there was four of us asking questions. So, yeah, but like, yeah, you were just like, so charming they didn't... Well, they didn't well ask. your words, not that ours. Was, that, was the, that, was the, that was the intention. We uh, tried to charm the pants off the, the girl or the guy, whoever was there. Mm. We do our darndest to, and and we, you could tell that we we're all aware of where the ham was, <laughs> and how close it was to getting scanned. And in that moment, it was like all hands on deck. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if there was like a look down, if there was, if I started to go down to the sticker, it was like, oi, so how long have you been working today, mate? You know what I mean? Like you'd need to be on the job. Nothing could be left to chance, Cody. Nothing. And that's how he got to like, I don't know, 20 from 20, something like that. <laughs> Big numbers we put huge up. Numbers. Not huge numbers, yeah. but big numbers. And watch the conversation fall off a rugby league cliff the second that <laughs> Once that's in the trolley, bag. once it's fucking bagged up, <laughs> job done. Couldn't give a shit. We'd just wander off and leave old mate to his fucking conversation. Couldn't oh. give a shit once it was bagged up. Punters and Dribbles the podcast is always brought to you by the betting platform of choice over here, and that is Ned's. Neds, baby. Neds. That's it. Number one in Australia, in our opinion. Nay the world, nay the universe, nay the multiverse. Now, if you want to follow Tom and I and our mate Guru and our mate Sebo, I mean, I think Tobler's on there, but who cares about that? The profiles tab, Ed, it's uh, an innovation by Neds where you can go and you can see what people are betting on. It is essentially accountability in app form well it's accountability personified correct uh there's also obviously the about even group in there where everyone's sharing their own bets giving each other shit having a laugh having a chuckle having a paul rahihi that's a rugby league reference that some may not get but no i don't. liked it listen if you followed me last week you would have got two from two from eight and you were robbed on two others that's just like that's just an aside but what i'm saying is edward simpson 29th of 1st, 1991, Double Base Hospital, starting to heat the fuck up. Whereas starting me, to heat the fuck up. Thomas William George, Birmingham, 10th of June, 1989, Barrel Hospital, cold as fuck. But not about me. Not about it's you. It's about, about Neds. Neds, and we love you. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. Did you... I mean, obviously, everyone's fucking seen it. That Zovia Coates try. At Zovia. Xavier, Zovia, Xavier. That's like... <laughs> best I've seen. That's the best finish of all time. And, like, you might be able to say, like, there have been some that are equally as, like, acrobatic. Maybe. I don't know. But context and everything, with where that was in the game, the last fucking play of the entire game. It's 20 seconds on the clock. He... That, like... I don't know, like everyone's going to have their fucking take on it. So it's not even like you're saying anything new, but it's just like it was the most absurd thing I've ever fucking seen. He jumps from how far out do we reckon? Is I'm going to call meters? it. I'll call it. Yeah, it's hard. he's five metres out. That's halfway between, between the, the, the goal line and the 10 metre. He's jumped five metres easily. Look at this. Holy fuck. Poor old DWZ. He's like, Nothing wait, he can what? Do. Look at that. I'd love to... Like, and just how high do we reckon the corner posts are? Because if you can get that, like, I just wouldn't mind trying to work out how high off the ground oh, it is. Oh, you're going to work it out. <laughs> right. Well, I'm saying if you could see, if that, if that post is a metre and fucking a half high. Uh, I'm going to say, well, there's I'm 160 answer. for reference. Sorry? I'm 160 tall for reference. But do, can oh, no, you, 170. Can probably. you look up how high the goal, the goal, the, what, what, what How many Cody's is it? And all corner post height. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, no, that's the posts. Uh, 1.3 metres. Non-rigid corner posts, at least 1.3 metres height. So, so let's go back, go back to, to the video. Just drag it back. And get him, get him up in the air at, at, his, at his, his apex. His apex, thank you, Edward. Probably there. Well, that's the head. Listen, his shoulders... The and his of his, ass, or the top of his head, even. Do you want to go that? Top high of his that? head's he'd be he'd be he'd be what six two, six three, six four, six five, six six. He's in the high. He's in the mid to high sixes, I reckon. We, what about meters? Because it's because uh, we're going one point three. Do you think he's two? Or is he one point? The top one, of his head. Yeah, two meters. The top of his head's probably about high one. How high? And now, how tall is Xavier? One nineties, two meter, maybe two meters. Two metres is fucking high. Yeah, it is. I also would like to know, is, is it, do Xavier's get called Egg Xavier or 194 centimetres, 6'4"? Sometimes they do. 
But I'm just trying to work out, like, is it Xavier or Xavier? I prefer Xavier if I'm just putting my own thoughts out there. I, I know many, many, many Xaviers with an X that, is, that it's pronounced Xavier, not Xavier. But I don't know if he's Xavier. Oh, he, you reckon he actually is? I don't know, because people fucking mix and match it. It's like, who's say Expresso? Um, so we'll call it two metres. I would say two metres. So he's, he's, he's two jumped metres. five and he's too high. Yeah, there you go. And, and then the put down. But his, his body control in the air is what's most impressive. So he takes contact from DWZ. If you want to go back a little bit, Cody, to where he takes the contact, the initial contact. Look at this. So he gets, he he gets, gets checked. checked and still keeps his eye on And his whole pilot. fucking body's out of the field of play. Oh, mate, it's unbelievable. Left arm just after the ball hits the ground. It's fucking wild stuff. They never used to be able to do this. For, for any young rugby league whippersnapper, maybe even Cody himself, you know, who's much like D or Dave, not long out of crash. Bit of a crash operator, yeah. There was a time when this didn't happen. I, I don't think it was that long ago. No, it wasn't. I honestly think, and I'm vibing this, but the first two times I ever saw anything crazy like that happen from wingers was either Brett Morris against the Tigers or it was... Uh, ben Pomeroy. Oh, Ben Pomeroy. Ben Pomeroy, I remember, scored a crazy one. Like I, can't, I don't know what year it was. I'll try to find it. So there was... Uh, but, uh, this Pomeroy one may even predate what I'm trying to remember here, but Brett Morris and maybe even like a Norfoluma, early career Norfoluma mm. for your shitbag club. Yeah, I'll get that up. But then there was like one that Josh Dugan, I think, scored where he was like, he was running across to the corner post. He's been tackled out and like his whole body is outside the field of play and his arms just like around and in. Maybe it was a GI one. Like, there was a few... Wasn't there a Hopawati one that was pretty fucking special? Yeah, but I think that was in Origin. Wasn't that the hand of God? Yeah, that, that was an Origin one where he was like, he's just curved his body around and in. Is this it? Fucking against Manly, of course it is. So there's... There, Where's the volume? Turn it up. Do we have a remote? The problem is, is you can't remember anything. Or at least I Take can't. Take it back so we can see it from the start again. Fucking Brett Stewart looks so hot. Yeah, this one, dude. Oh, that's pretty cool. But I don't think I've seen someone leap from as far out as as Coates did. No. That's, that's what's particularly impressive about it. Is yeah. He's come from so far out. This is pretty cool, though. That's it's pretty impressive stuff. I wouldn't mind someone stitching them all up. Yeah. Yeah, it's not for From happier times. Does the point hit the ball? Look at that. No, the Ray Warren in commentary. Point hits the grass. Look, look, look. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Cody. Oh, That'll do. Yes. It's too stop starting. Yeah, for it my is. Brain. The internet. Terrific. Um, that was hot stuff, but that was that was what, 2013? So yep. they've been doing it for at least, say, 10. 10 years. But like the reaction there is like, what the fuck? We've never seen it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. not like that's not commonplace at this point. Even though, I think I think I think the easiest way of, of looking at it potentially is that it's way more commonplace now than it yeah. ever has been. Even though what Xavier Xavier whatever did is probably the greatest thing you've, you've we've ever seen in terms of a finish. It's not the it's not like nothing like that has ever been done. That's more it. Whereas if that was like ten fucking years ago, oh, you pack it up, you go home. You pack it up, you go home. You, Game's you, over. That's, it's done. Yeah. Rugby league, you finished the game of rugby league. You finished it. You've clocked it. You've like clocked old mate who clocked Tetris recently. What? Finished Tetris? Yeah. It's been finished twice in like the last two years, I think. I, mate, you got to have fuck all to do to finish Tetris. Like, I love that game, by the way, but like, you've got to have Ooh, nothing you're a virgin. to do. you got to be, a, yeah. There's, there's no Almost point. certainly. Well, I can't say for sure. But, but also, I think like be it's in your best interest to have zero interest in sex because if you do, that will distract you from what your ultimate goal is, which is completing Tetris. It's fucking outrageous. I've seen a couple of clips of how quick it gets. It's you do insane. not want to get distracted by tits or ass or penis, depending on your proclivity here, mm. when trying to complete a task. But it's not even like a finish. The game just wigs out and stops. That's even better. You break it. You break. You actually break the game. You don't finish it. 
But that is breaking. That is finishing. Yeah, yeah. And but I I like it. It's more of a pure like you've made the game wig out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've beaten the game. Yeah, the game's collapsed. Can we find some footage of Tetris being beaten, please? Please. And like as it's wigging out towards the end, there's like two levels where it goes like the colours fuck out, makes it really difficult to play and shit. And is this just the game slowly imploding? It's like yeah, fuck yeah, the colours yeah, 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 gone too yeah, quick. Yeah, correct. How many how much like how many things do you think sex is responsible for like ruining in terms of like achieving greatness achieving like achievement getting in the way oh mate i think like all the time it's also ruined civilizations you know yep heaps of wars have been fought over pussy eh? <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> fucking that's what happens mate yeah that's what happens i and get dicks. It. i don't mean to clear patch dicks, a punch no. on i'm um, do you clear patch a punch on surely for I mean, cock i don't know <laughs> She might have. She, well, listen, it wouldn't shock me if she did. Again, when you get like... What about Mary, Queen of the Scots? Is she... Is in the most recent she one? Fought a few Queen Mary wars? that we just... No, I'm talking about like the Queen of Scotland back in the day. Oh, I don't know. Is it... Oh, as a kid. Okay, well, he's not fucking anyway. <laughs> Great point. Look at this shit. Oh, wow. 13-year-old becomes first person to beat Tetris. Ever? Ever. Can we get some volume on this? Pretty sure. How long are we? I don't, yeah, I just want to see This is him. only like 10 seconds, I think. I just want to see him win. <laughs> He's wheezing, the little nerd. <laughs> that would be so satisfying for that little fucker, though, wouldn't it? First Who needs roots ever. when you're doing that? Yeah, this wasn't that long ago. Like Imagine being ago. the first person ever to beat Tetris. Someone will say, well, I said in the last two years, maybe it's in the last couple of months. It's two people that have done it. Yeah, that was two. Uh, this stuff Because I'm out. pretty sure someone else did it who wasn't as young. Dude. That guy, basi that, that, he was basically coming anyway. Correct. That's his sex. Correct. And that's uh, the first person to ever beat it? How, how I keep, yeah, I think so. After I 34 know. years, I don't know, a, I don't know how we it's one it. of those days. It's one of those had well, I'm a little bit hungover if I can let like let everyone peek behind the curtain. I think you should let them peek. So, congratulations to Xavier, Xavier, Xavier Coates, fucking impressive stuff. Storm get another W. It was actually a great game. Poor old Guru on the Warriors trying to whip him home, and then the Storm score fucking two tries in the last couple of minutes. Yeah. A real hazing for our mate rugby league guru in terms of about even checking mm. on Wednesday night to see how he's going. Yeah. I can't talk too much shit because I haven't had a single bet get up all year. Um, I don't entirely know what this is. I saw the headline. I wrote it down in my notes and I sort of wanted to find out on camera. I hope it's what I think it is. Well, apparently that there's like an odour. <laughs> <laughs> at Canberra's stadium. GIO. GIO. And Ricky was talking about it in the post-match press conference. Good something. odor, bad odor. Oh, I think it stinks. Oh the oh the stadium stinks. Something like something about GIO stadium stinking. Really? Yeah. What, needing a good scrub? <laughs> or built on an old tip. It's potential. a thing I don't know. Like it could be anything. I like it's uh, we'll we'll have to find it, but some sort of fucking it's absolute crap. Canberra makes passionate plea for New stadium over stench. Canberra Raiders coach Ricky Stewart has called for a new stadium to be built in the capital city after an unpleasant smell was noticed at GIO Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Can we be sure it just wasn't the fact the Tigers were there? <laughs> <laughs> it's very coincidental. The pungent aroma, as referred to by a reporter in Stewart's press conference, didn't stop the Raiders from securing a 32 to 12. Asked about the smell, Stuart expressed his sympathy for fans who had to put up with it before making a call for change. The stadium administration and stadium people are wonderful people. They accommodate us so well. Milton O'Brien and his team are really good people. They are they and Canberra deserve a new stadium. What's, what's going on here, though? I don't know what it fucking smells like. It's absolute crap they don't rebuild a stadium to look after Canberra's people. I'm all for education, I'm all for hospitals, but we have to have some common sense. Common sense. 
There was a concert here last week and all the buses stopped and people were left stranded. Honestly, politically, and honestly, politically, and I'm very uneducated in politics, which I'm happy about, but politics should learn off sport because I believe there's a lot of good leaders in sport. This is now like he's trailing off into it, like he's not making points. What is this? Last year, a potential new stadium was in planning for Canberra before the ACD government decided against it. In May 23, in a submission to the government, the NRL labelled JIO Stadium no longer fit for purpose. So it's complete shithole. It's a complete shithole, but I don't, I don't understand. I'm no closer to understanding what it smells like. What the fuck is causing the smell? Can we hold on? Can we hear what Ricky said? Sorry, dude. Yep. I know he just read everything, but I wouldn't mind just hearing hearing Ricky talk about a stinky old stadium. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I feel sorry for those people there with the, the, the stench. And shit, like, I know people laugh at it, but we are the capital of Australia. And the, the stadium administration and the stadium people here are wonderful people. They accommodate us so well. Milton O'Brien and all his team are really, really good people. They, and Canberra, deserve a new stadium. It's, it's absolutely crap that they don't build a stadium to look after Canberra's people. And I'm all for education, I'm all, all for hospitals. Um, 100% but we... Right. Literally. We have to have some... Yeah, right, sense. fuck it, it's the same thing. Now, I want to know, though, what the fuck is causing the stench? What is it? What is causing the Canberra Stadium to stink? And is it the fact, that the fact the Tigers are there? We can't be sure. But, like, surely there's a little bit more insight into why this place smells like shit. I've been to the AIS. I've been to Bruce before. I don't remember it stinking. Well, this, this would be a new... No, this would be a new smell thing. I don't think... I, don't, I think we, this would have come across our desk much sooner if there was just a consistent wafting of poo that, like, permeated the experience at that ground. <laughs> Can you imagine going to your, like... Anytime your team had a home game, you had to go and brave the smell of the ground. Yeah, I mean, that, that surely would, would be something talked about. Suck. But it also sounds like Ricky's going, well, they shouldn't have to put up with that as if it happens all the time. And that's why we need a new stadium. Well, I think maybe the smell is now becoming a problem as opposed to like a, it didn't just happen on the weekend, maybe. So, yeah, the, in the last little while, maybe someone's just left as a dead rat somewhere. Can someone who goes to JIO Stadium consistently please confirm what the fuck's going on here? Have you found My anything? mate was there yesterday, actually, which is funny. Um, I can't say much can about it. Can you message your mate and ask you if it stunk? Yeah, I can. Um, I just The only thing I can see is a Canberra Times article with a paywall, but the uh, heading was a rotten egg stench. Oh. But I'll, I'll ask. What's the paywall? We should have fucking... It's Canberra Times, I guess. We should, we should have the access to that. Well, are they affiliated with our major? Yeah, the they all would men's be. Men's Women's Weekly? I would assume they will be. Or even if they're the SMH, we have both of them. Good point. But they're not working at the moment, actually. Well, they are and they're not. Let's not bore the people with that. those semantics. Um, I love that Canberra Stadium stinks, though. <laughs> I just, that's a rugby league yarn from the <laughs> heavens. <laughs> you know, it smells like rotten eggs, dude. Mate. That is so fucking rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's Canberra. Oh, it's no. just everything. Those poor cunts up there. It's like. And it's rugby. That's rugby league. Yeah. That is, dude. You fucking stinky like, raiders. You can't get out of your own way. We sit here and we take the piss out of Canberra like everyone else does that doesn't live there. And, and you know, you try and defend yourselves. You try and... You play hard, good, honest rugby league. Yeah. You get out there, you have two from... You win two from two. You roll up your sleeves. You got a, you've got a great sort of ethos. aura and energy and ethos. You got hard a, workers. You've got, you got a coach that just delivers week after week, Hairy day after arms. day. Hairy arms, not political, all, not political. Happy is not political. Doesn't want to be political. Right. Believes in hospitals and schools, <laughs> but he also doesn't want to play footy in a fucking rotten. Well, egg he thinks. Den. Well, he thinks that the ground staff, uh, the curators, and the people at Canberra deserve better time. They do, but when 
your stadium smells like rotten eggs, it fits into the box that we've created for you. Yeah, which you is that Canberra's a big stinky shithole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just... It aligns. Yeah, and we want better for the people of Canberra as well. Let that be known. We stand shoulder to shoulder, not in front, not behind, directly next to the good, hard-working people of Canberra when we say that we think you do, you deserve better than to have a stadium that stinks like rotten eggs. But I also love it. I actually, I, I love it. It's great content. Mm. There's just no denying it. And unfortunately, if it's a... If it's a decision between content for us and a stadium for you, whilst I do stand shoulder to shoulder with you in your plight for a fresh stadium, mm. I'm going to have to sit this one out. There's a world where if Ricky's playing eyes up rugby league, which he's been known to play in the past, you, you lean into the stench mm. and you leave it around. You get you get you get nose plugs. You get nose plugs for the people in the stadium. In lime green, you get lime green nose plugs. You get the boys used to it. By training there week after week, yeah. day after day. And when the opposition come down, crowd and player rattled beyond belief. Like when the like when Australia goes and plays cricket in like India, where the popu- the, the pollution levels are like at dangerous, dangerous levels. hundred percent popular exactly. That's one thing. Also we play on goat tracks. I mean it's just you know, you just you're trying to get a, an edge over yeah, the yeah, opposition. Yeah, yeah. Come down, it's gonna be freezing cold and it's gonna smell like shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a that's an imposing, intimidating environment to go and visit. Yeah, it, it they're basically the, the they're playing at the tip. You're basically playing at the tip, <laughs> but the tip before I don't know if you've been to the tip lately, punters and jubblers. They smell a lot better than they used to. Do they smell better than GIO? Well, I'm saying GIO might be out doing the tip. Oh, okay, that's what I'm saying. Stink from from a stink perspective. Also, your fans will come and they'll leave pretty quickly because only home fans will be able to buy the bloody nose plug. So then you're playing in front of a hostile crowd yeah. with no support. Yeah. Jeez, I don't know. You could be turning that into a bit of a fortress, yeah, Ricky. I think, well, you've got to make lemonade. And it sounds to me like the OCD government's made the decision no new stadium to be built. It's also half an hour from, like, civilization, I believe. Bruce. Which is usually where tips are. Bruce. Yeah. Interesting. Uh. That's usually where a tip is. I believe Apex Oval in Dubbo was built on an old tip, but it doesn't yeah. smell. I remember good. playing footy on, the, on top of an old tip before, in the Shoalhaven. There you go. Mate, it's done. Um, listen, good luck. I mean, I think they've got a, we've got to rename their fucking stadium, though, to either the tip or, like, to the Rotten Egg stadium. No, I think it's called like the tip. I think you call it tip. the tip. Yeah. Like, you got to, like, playing away at the tip? At the tip? Mate. Good luck. Good luck. They'll, they won't lose a home game this year if that stench sticks up. Yeah. If it stays around, they, they're going undefeated at the tip. Mm. Consider that when you're punting next, punters and dribblers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it the storm in Canberra? Wow, the storm at top of the table. You know, the storm are killing it. But how do they go at a stinky tip? How do they go at the tip? In the, in the middle of winter. How do they go at the tip in winter? That's an overwhelming experience. You're Freezing cold, your senses, your eyes are watering because it smells like fucking rotten eggs. That's a tough place to play footy. Yeah. Anyway, congratulations to Canberra. I think that's a. I think they'll look back on that and go like blessing in disguise, sort of thing. Like you know, when they make the eight. Yeah. You'll know why. Yeah. It's also an opportunity for sponsors. You get a fucking you get a, a skip bin sponsor on there. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to find ways to make this shit work for you. And having a stinky stadium might seem like a problem, but you just got to gotta approach it the right Silver way. Silver linings. Silver linings. Playbook. Jennifer yeah, Lawrence. It's a great film. Jennifer Lawrence, Bradley Cooper. Uh, I fell in love with Jennifer Lawrence during that period of my life uh, when that film came out. Now. Uh, my mate did get back to me. Not that exciting, but he said he, like, couldn't smell it nor has he ever smelt it when he's there. But he said, it, like, the stadium's just like a big open concrete bowl. So, like, it wouldn't surprise like a toilet if, it, bowl. if it did stink. I also think, because it sounds like Cody's speaking to a Canberra local who he's doesn't... going to come know, into bat. Well, he's going to come into bat, but he also doesn't know any different. He's raised in the tip. That's right. It's like if you walk into... You know, you don't know this, but people that can smell will know that most houses have their own scent, right? Yep. Some places stink, 
And if you just if you exist in it for long enough, you're not going to be able to smell it. No, you become you become used to your surroundings. The same way, like in India, they don't really care about playing cricket in barely visible pollution levels. Well, they probably care, but there's nothing they can do about it. There's a bit of that, but they're used to it. It's like well, okay, better example: training at altitude. Yes, if that's I probably a better example. If I live in the altitude, then probably I'm just better. better there, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. This guy lives in a tip. Of course, he doesn't notice the fucking smell. <laughs> But Ricky did, and Ricky lives in the tip. Ricky's He's, pissed off about Ricky it. Ricky hasn't always lived in the tip. You know what I mean? He, he used he to live in the tip. In it. But also the tips, mate. Yeah, he wasn't... He, well, he lived out there, but it hasn't always stunk. Mm. Was it like a bane, like I grew up in yeah, the dark? I was born thing? in the tip. <laughs> yeah. That's everyone in Canberra. Yeah. Born in the born tip. On the tip. I was born in the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please Google for us, Cody? And we probably should acknowledge that Tommy Tobler has been sacked. Uh, so Cody now taking over. Basically, Tobler, for those that uh, were furious, probably an accurate term, mm. last week about the transitions on the YouTube, that was Tobler. Yeah. Uh, he's been sacked accordingly. It's been whipped, it's, it's shot, been, and sacked. It's been nice knowing you, bro. Mm. Thanks for your service to Dribble and Yarn. Your service is now no longer required. Uh, that problem has been solved. Yeah. The transition thing was a uh, setting issue yes, on the switcher. It Which, wasn't Cody trying to get funky. No, it wasn't Cody <laughs> trying to express himself uh, <laughs> artistically. Yeah. After a couple of nice comments from, you know, his, uh, his, yeah, then his design work, yeah, he then yeah. starts to try and get a little funky. He gets a little bit carried away. Yeah. No, no, not this time. Um, mm -hmm. It was actually Willie Burns, and he did it across <laughs> two podcasts. <laughs> yeah, he did it twice. He did it twice. <laughs> uh, Tobler's sick again, yeah, so sick. get better, bruh. Get better. You know, he obviously isn't on the good days. Cause... Well, I actually asked him, I said, have you been taking him? And he's like, not like, he's like very irregularly. So that's his problem. Cody, I don't know if I already asked you to do this. Scott Morrison of Absolute knob fame um <laughs> did he take he I, I saw something that he's handed he wants like he handing back his sharks number one ticket holder is that because he's not in politics anymore correct edward the guy pretended to like rugby league and swing his scarf around at the games like a big old gimp when he was uh in power and then now it's like again now that may <laughs> not be true because <laughs> i just read a headline <coughs> well let's wait let's wait and see what cody finds before you rip his balls off well i mean we're getting prepared to rip them off tom yeah we got warm up the hands <laughs> you know what i mean mm. it was brutal scomo reveal over nrl loudspeaker as xpm slandered in front of thousands what date is this article March 16th, 2024. Okay. Yep. Former, Former Prime Minister Scott Morrison has handed back his, num his title as number one ticket holder with his beloved Cronulla Sharks as he prepares for his new life away from politics. Mr. Morrison has given the honorary title when serving as Treasurer in 2016, but in a statement revealed he told the Sharks Chief Executive he would be handing it back. Thoroughly enjoyed my association with the club. In this role, and deeply grateful for the club giving me the honour of the past eight seasons. I look forward to continuing to be a passionate supporter of the Sharks in many years ahead. Proud of the history, excited of the future. Why would you hand it back, though? I don't get it. Do you because like he doesn't have a profile anymore, I suppose, is what right. he's saying. But, like, okay, so because he's not famous. I mean, you always have a profile if you're a former prime minister, right? Like, that's just the reality. Keep going. They announced at the loudspeaker at Shark Park that Scott Morrison was officially not the number one Cronulla Sharks ticket holder anymore while he was in the house. It was brutal. Well, were people cheering and shit? Why is are they why writing while he, why, while he was in the house? Like quote? he was there. In, Everyone was waiting in, for the no, no, replacement no, no, and nothing. It was just written, a slander. They've written in the house. No. Like the journo's written that. No. The Sharks fan wrote on X. Oh, so okay. that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, colloquialism. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Everyone was waiting for the replacement and nothing. It was just a slander. Another Sharks fan wrote the news. Could not, could not have been announced in a better way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's such a dork. Listen. He, and if he's also he's, like, apparently like there's photos of him with bulldog shit on as well. Like he's just, I mean, as politicians do, 
when they're just trying to appeal to a fucking audience. He, if he hands it back because he's no longer in politics and doesn't feel like he has the gravitas to be number one a ticket holder and still goes to heaps of games, sure. But I just get the feeling that he might start sneaking out the back door. Now, nah, look, the bit. Sharks... In 2010, Mr. Morris famously declared the Sharks have his loyalty. But by 2023, the club was reportedly mulling, pulling at his number one status over the robo-debt scandal. Reasonable. Very reasonable. That's the end of the article. Yep. Right. Look at him in there banging on the fucking thing. What a dork. I've never wanted to shave someone's head more. I'm not going to lie. Never wanted to shave someone's head more. Just begging to shave it. Dude, look at it. It's all front loaded at the front and there's nothing at the back. Like, I just want to go in there with clear. It'd take me 30, less than 30 seconds. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a 20 second job, man. 10 second. Scott Morrison here. Yeah, it's. Look at that shit, dude. You give me some manscaped, not an ad. Just the only one I could think of. Like, I don't even understand what the thought process is with that. Just let me add it. Let me look at that one with him with fake hair down the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. That's nice. Um, anyway. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him any longer. No, I wouldn't be the shocked. Football. Now, a couple more things. Can we just get the results from the weekend up, please, Cody? Puns and dribblers, when we're talking rugby league, NRL, God's God's winter sport. We do it on behalf of our good friends, our dear friends, our best friends at KO. The only place that you can watch every game, every round, live and ad free. They get every game. I mean, I just I I know that we go on and on and on about this, but I can't I can't reconcile the fact that people don't have KO and try to pretend like they like rugby league. Mm. You can't. No, you can't. You can't like rugby league. And not have KO. The only re- the only way I think that it would make sense for a rugby league fan to not have KO would be that if, if you were a Tigers fan and you actually don't want to see your team play. Like let's go through the results. If you're if you if you love the Sharks, right? And you don't have KO, couldn't watch it. If you, you like, like the Raiders or the Tigers or the Tigers, nah, couldn't watch it. Keep going down, please. Cowboys or Knights? I know there's shitloads of you out there. Nah, couldn't watch it. Storm and Warriors? Nah, you couldn't watch it. You wouldn't have seen Xavier Coates score the greatest fucking try of all time. Dolphins, lot of support up on the sunny Sunshine Coast, North Brisbane. Dragons, that area. lot of support, lot of long. So with the Mad Dragon, he wouldn't be able to watch it. Couldn't watch it. Couldn't watch it. Do you understand what we're saying, puns and dribblers? Are you getting the fucking picture now? We will go to look at the games for next week just to give you a bit more of an insight into what you'll miss. Just quickly. So, Thursday night, Broncos, Panthers, Raiders, Warriors, you will not be able to watch your teams play next weekend or this coming weekend. Dogs, Titans. Won't be able to. Dragons, Cows, again, another week not being able to watch your team. Tigers, Sharks, another week not being able to watch your team. Night Storm, another week not being able to watch your team. So... We're making sense. You getting it? Oh, you live in Newcastle, do you? You love the Knights, do you, bro? Big fucking Joey Johns fan, are you? Love Calum Ponger and that. Get KO you? then. Yeah, you're a fucking liar. Get KO right. then. Get KO. Otherwise, you're just talking shit. Smart dizzies. Smart decisions. Correct now, mundo. Um, rabbits look shit. Rabbits let's, look let's, shit. Let's yeah. fucking, let's get to, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get down, let's get down to business. Who sung that? No idea. It wasn't Tim O'Matic, was it? Fuck. <laughs> or Timmy Trumpet. <laughs> Timmy Trumpet. I'd love to see them do a collab. Uh, Tiesto. Okay. Really? Let's get Tiesto down. Let's get down dead. to business. Tiesto. No, that's uh, Avicii. Ah. Uh, back to the games. Yeah. Not important. No. Uh, wasted time doing that. Broncos <laughs> twenty eight, Rabbitohs eighteen. I, I just. I don't. Like what I see out of the bunnies. The bunnies are the bunnies are have just picked up where they left off a little bit. They're not very good at rugby league at the moment. They're not very good at rugby league, and no when, disrespect, no, none intended, Tom. Mm. But when you when you have your own two first and foremost, you've got injuries out the wazoo. 
Demetrio in the headlines oh, this week. Bro, after, you want to see something interesting? After giving one of the great fucking Nabras of all time to Josh Mansour. Yeah, go watch, listen to uh, the buy round with James Graham and Josh Mansour. We shared a clip to our story last night, um, and they said the clips on their Instagram as well. And it's a long, it's a long video. It's a couple of minutes anyway, not long, but in terms of clippable shit. He goes on to talk about how, like, Mansour's saying how, like, him and JD didn't see eye to eye, how he basically said a lot of shit to him. And this is Mansour's side of the story as well, right? So, obviously, fucking, you know, Demetrio might have a different one, but that, like, he um, he said a lot of things to him about, like, oh, you're close to getting back in the side. He named him in the team twice and then pulled him out during captain's run. So, like, he'd call him on captain's run and be like, come to my office and, like, oh, I'm going to rest you. He's like, it's round one, cunt. What are you resting me for? And then the next time they did it, like, oh, you missed a couple of tackles. And he's like, show me. Like, show me the missed tackles. One of them was a four on two where he almost saved the fucking try. The other one was a, he got bumped and then made the tackle. And he's like, you're, you're dropping me for two, for those? Mm. And then like, oh, and then he'd say to him like, oh, mate, you're close. He can't, like, he didn't, he said that Mansell like, said he got up and he was like, fuck this. And he walked out. Didn't speak to him for like a month or something. Then Demetrio just comes up to the gym. And he's like, mate, you're really close. You're, you're close to getting back. Then the next week, someone like a winger gets injured and they just debut another kid. It's Isaac like, Thompson got yeah. debuted, yeah. Isaac Thompson. He's just like, fuck this shit. Then when he's l- at the end of every year, they do like a video package to say farewell for departing players. And so they all get in there and he's the first person in this video and he didn't even know he was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> like, how the fuck do you treat people like that? It's wild. It's wild. And then stuff. when you see them sucking, Respectfully, all the cliffs that, that fell shit off. That Sam all that Burgess remember, shit remember that happened that, last year. Remember all year? that shit that happened last all year. All that shit that happened. Lost how like, many in a row? Tumbled out of the eight. Coming what first? I think yeah. and went and finished ninth. Yeah. Remember all that shit? Maybe Listen, a bit more going on. All we're, sma- all we're saying is there's a lot of fucking smoke yeah. getting about. Oh, it's smoky in here, it's dude. Very smoky. smoke alarms going off. If you've had your batteries updated, which I hope you all have. You better off. Maybe they haven't, and that's why they don't realise. Maybe, but there's smoke everywhere, and there's there's whispers coming out that we're just regurgitating, not our opinion. Well, Mansour said it. Mansour said it. Not even a whisper. Not a Fucking whisper. Screamed it in all microphone. He did scream it. I'd yeah. like to get Mansour on the potty. So would I, and maybe maybe hear some some of her own tales. Fuck yeah. Well, you would hope we, you'd hear some of your own tales. Some of his own tales. Yeah. Point is the Rabbitohs suck, yep. and all those people think they were going to win the comp. Matty the Waterboy looking at you, bro. Sucked in, Matty the Waterboy. Sucked dude. in, bro. Oh, sucked in. Follow a real club. Yeah, fuck that. It'd be stressful being Matty the Waterboy having your team suck that much. Seriously, it'd be awful. And we love Matty, obviously. But like, hey, he's a dear friend. Christ. Love him. Like a, like a brother. But facts are facts. Your club yeah. sucks, and there's smoke Ev- everywhere. It stinks. Sharkies beat the dogs. No surprises there. Yeah, but it was six all half time. Not the worst. I listen. The dogs aren't that bad. Yeah. As in they're not as bad as they were. They okay. have improved. Tom, that's if they were playing for forty minutes, they would have gone to fucking Golden Point. Great, congratulations. That's incredible stuff. Unfortunately, you play eighty minutes in rugby league. Correct, you do. So that but, means absolutely fuck all. No, it does mean fuck all. But the thing is with the dogs, right? I feel like they've got like a couple of individual players that can do some crazy shit right so you've got your Crichtons Burtons Kickhouse whatever yep. like things that but then they don't like they almost don't have the player to give the ball to that then continues the crazy shit happening like you saw that Mortalo try where Teague Wilton throws this fucking badass flick pass to Talakai mm. to start the break Talakai then can continue that hectic move by putting in a grubber then Ronaldo comes in and continues that hectic move to score that he grubs it again to score the try like that's what the dogs don't have. They have a few players that can do some cool shit, but they just don't have enough of it. Are they... So you, are you suggesting they're close? I'm not even saying they're close. They're just better than they were. They're like... They just aren't a pile of shit. They aren't roll over and take me sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. They're, and, they're, and, and it's early on in the season. Maybe they can... There's a bit of fight in the dog. Yeah. And I'm not saying stay patient, Bulldogs fans. That ain't my... That ain't my racket. Well, it's not your it's not line. My line. Um, but I just don't think they're as shit as maybe like people are 
not even they're making. They're not going to make the eight. No, I. But they, they they're not going to make the eight. I would be shocked if they made the eight. But they're just not as like spoony as I feel like people are implying. Yeah. yeah. But even though they also absolutely are very spoony. You know, I, I kind of I'm not making sense, but I am making sense. Like, well, they could make, they could easily get the spoon, but they're just not that shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> the, the, the Tigers. Um, Cody's team. Fucking losers. Uh, they. So, can I just show you like what the uh, so across all of their grades on the weekend? This is maybe on the back page of the Sunday. Men's Women's Weekly, where's my... I screenshotted it because it was fucking glorious. So, Harold Matthews, the Magpies, they won against the Rabbitohs, 26-14. Against the Bulldogs, the Tigers. So, in Harold Matthews, like, in the split up as Magpies. They split up, yeah. Um, Tigers lost 46-0 to uh, the Bulldogs. SG Ball, Rabbitohs beat the Magpies 42-6. to The Bulldogs beat the Tigers 42-6. to New South Wales Cup Raiders beat the Magpies 50 to 12. Jersey Flag, the Raiders beat the Tigers 36 nil. And then in the NRL, the Raiders beat the Tigers 32 to 12. A total of 262 to 62. So it's not even like there's anything coming. <sighs> Stay patient. Sorry, what's up? Can I chime in about yeah. this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, basically, the. There's a big problem happening with all our junior grades at the moment due to pass mismanagement. So all our SG ball players who are like 18, 19 are playing cup and just getting pumped. But the Tigers do have like one of the best junior crops coming through at the moment. I know that's hard to believe, but... I, listen, they should have one of the best junior crops coming through because they've got that fucking yeah. that catch, the Western Sydney catchment area. But you just got fucked <laughs> yeah. up to yeah. 62 to 62. That's yeah. all he's yeah. saying. Like, we know that you've got the whole yeah. southwestern catchment yeah. area, the biggest in fucking, ba- arguably the biggest in the country. Yeah. But, you but it's got, not showing. No, you just got absolutely fucking steamed. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. should be winning comps, mate. Yeah. Not making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Correct. Fair point. Fair yeah. point. No, it's a Correct. We've been over this many times. It should be less excuses, more comps. Like, did it feel good to make that excuse? Or did it, and I, well, I don't mean good in like, but like, you know what I mean? Did it, how did that feel to, for that to be your excuse? Like, it never did, feels good. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. As we said, stop making excuses. <laughs> Not much of being a comps. Tigers fan feels good. Okay. I like that you actually fucking love that you support the Tigers. It's yeah. really good having a, a, an absolutely like a hardcore, passionate <laughs> fan in studio with us. Yeah. Because I want to just start bouncing a couple of things around here. Now, obviously, Benji Marshall has come out in the off-season. I think it was in the pre-season, maybe like November. It was November. like November last year. And he basically said that he doesn't want to be a 24-7 coach and he wants to be with his family. Now, he's come out and like reiterated what that means. Through the, from the hours of 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., he likes to be a family man, a dad to his young family. What an asshole. What a but, lazy dog. But I just love that there was journos there the other day going, yeah, but like if you start poorly, would you consider becoming a 24-7 coach? I'm like, that is just such niggle. I know. And poor old Benji didn't take too well to it. I'm like, you've got to see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to ruffle your feathers, mate. And, and apparently they, it's they, like, they know you need to sleep. They know you need to eat with your family. Like, they know that. They're yeah. trying to get under your skin, because bro. Because there's no way you can actually be a 24 They're trying to get coach. under your skin, yeah. mate. And then if you react, then... Which you are. Which you are, then the, the story continues. Whereas if you just went, shut the fuck up and just kept going. Like, yeah, thanks, Dean Ritchie. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm just going to go continue being a fucking coach now Yeah. Uh, while you go and do, like, sensationalist bullshit. But how did you feel about his his handling of the media? Would you prefer a 24-7 coach? Are you concerned? <laughs> I think you guys covered it well last week as well. I think great, you're, point. It's a great point. It's a, well, that's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah, it's pretty scout that they, like, because that comment was from, like, December last year, and they just randomly bring it up, like, three days out from the game. Like... <laughs> No, they've been so, sitting on it. Yeah. They've yeah, been yeah, sitting no, no, on yeah, it. Yeah, I know, exactly. They've been yeah, trying yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. to hatch. Oh, it's not even that. They yeah. know they know it'll hatch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. It's like, you know, if you've got a yoga mix sitting in the fridge, you're like, oh, well, I'll eat that when I'm good and ready. And yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. And I'm going to love it. Uh, could, well, because it's, well, it's non-perishable. Oh, yeah. That cool. thing will fucking go all day. You can come back in six years like that. <laughs> Correct. Um, so you do you think it's reasonable for him to want to like engage with his family uh, from the hours of five to eight? It's disgusting. Yeah, mm. yeah, 
That is pretty funny. Well, that's up. why you lost 32-12. Gordy said something, and again, Gordy... Like, What's that, three hours a day? That's three sevens? That's 21 hours. That's 21 hours. Yeah. That's well, how you win this. comps. That's how you win. No, that's how you win comps. Oh, well, what's what's uh, what's three sevens twenty one? So he's got twenty one hours with his family a week. Not even a day. No, not even a full day with his family. So like, you know, get it together, Benji. You fucking <laughs> Gordy Gordy on Triple M said something, which was like. So Ethan Strange scored a try against the Tigers. He did like a he did left foot step or something. And Gordy was like, if if they if the Raiders were playing the Storm, he wouldn't have scored that try because Craig Bellamy is a twenty four seven coach and he would have spent the time. Gordy said that he would have spent the time to know that Ethan Strange has a left foot step and a fucking. And I was like, and again. Love Gordy, but that has to be one of the most flawed fucking arguments I've ever heard in my life. He's, what's Gordy doing there? Again, huge fan of Gordy. Huge. Massive fan. Is What's his, what's his MO there? <laughs> so, that fucking, you need to be a 24-7 coach. I guess. <clears throat> but there's no way that there's coaches, that, that the coaches actually are that. Of course they're not. But basically it's like you need to... Bury yourself. You got to live point. and breathe it. You need to basically be be be. Uh, I guess like ignoring your family to such a degree that you know maybe a divorce comes up. But <laughs> are they are they potentially? There's like you could look at it this way. Are they are they honing in on it because twenty four seven coaches quote unquote and it's never actually twenty four hours, but a twenty four seven coach quote unquote wouldn't even he wouldn't say that publicly. They wouldn't say that they want to carve off time for other shit. That's they more, just say, yeah. I fucking live and breathe rugby league. You know even what? if it's not true. I'd love Benji to just come back now and go, you know what? I'm sorry, I take it back. I I'm gonna be a twenty four seven coach now. Just yeah. say it. No, just I, say mate, he's a twenty four seven coach. He should. He should come out and go, I'm not sleeping anymore, mate. No, 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 I just it. love the club that much. Yeah. Fuck my family. And then obviously just keep he, doing what you're doing. He should come out and say, Fuck my family, I'm twenty four seven, baby. Yeah, I'm twenty four seven. I reckon people would finger themselves for that. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he would. And you don't have to do it. No. It's called a white lie, Benji. Yeah. Learn what they are. Sometimes you've got to manipulate the truth. Sometimes you need to, to take some Kalamata olives and put the sticker on some ham, Benji. Correct. Maybe you're out with the boys and your wife's away for the weekend. And she goes, well, what time did you get home last night? You don't tell the truth, no. Benji. You don't tell her. I don't know. Quarter to 12, something, something like, like that. that. It's a complete fib. Just a fucking, but, but just a little one. And not a massive one. I was, you know what I mean? It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm. You were back at four. Exactly. It's a couple it, of hours. It's, it's a couple of hours. But to them, potentially a big deal. So you manipulate the truth. To them, the media, you know, being a family man, spending time with your young children is a problem. That's a problem for right That's a lady. problem. You got to, you're talking to old school generation who went to work, went to pub, went home, went to sleep. Like that's like. Yeah, that's it. There was no family you're time. You're talking to people who, who, weren't hugged by their fathers. Who've never heard the words, I love you. You know what I Hard mean? Hard men who like drinking fucking... Red wine dark till their noses beer fall off. And red wine and, you know... Burst capillaries in their face sort of stuff. And hanging with the boys and fuck the family type operators. Like, they don't know what being a, a father to a family... They don't know about emotional availability, Benji. You know, they don't understand that being able to tell someone you love them is actually something that men can do. They don't that, know They that. think that makes you sound like a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like a weak dog. Play the game, Benji. Pretend to be an emotionally repressed, fucking emotionally stunted you know, you know, robot just to appease them. But you can hug your kids from the privacy of your own home. Yeah. Just don't... Draw the blinds, yeah, Benji. Just don't show us. Draw the blinds, mate, and hug on your own terms, on your own time, don't in your own it, environment. Don't force your family values down my throat. No, that's what they're saying. They're like, you're a weak prick. Or you're yeah. spending time with your family, are you? You're oh, a weak yeah. prick. Well, oh, that's yeah. why you lose it. Oh, yeah, I bet you're taking your missus out on a date, are you, you yeah. fucking pussy? Bet you're having sex, too, you yeah. fucking soft dog. Oh, yeah? 
well, you're not coming to the pub with, with me and the fucking boys. Yeah. Now you got to play the game, Benj. Hey, Benji. And we listen, I'll be honest with you, Benj. No one in the world wants me to do, wants you to do well more than me I'd and Tom. To. Yeah. Like, we, we respect what you've done for the game. You're an ornament, mate. Absolute ornament. You're and on we, the mantelpiece. And we want you to have success, really. And that might sound like bullshit to people, but you don't coach the yield, so I do want you to have success. <laughs> I want you to do well. I don't want you to be thrown on the scrap heap for the third time by, your, by, your, by the by club the that you love. Club. By the club that you love. And part of that means that you need to start playing the media like a fiddle, like Wayne does. Yeah. All right? Wayne's got his... And getting up there, getting emotional, saying that you want to, like, be with your family and shit. Like, they, that's fucking... Yeah, mate. That's bloody... That's red to a bull, yeah. whatever the fucking Red rag is. to a bull. A red rag to a bull. You're giving them fodder, yeah. fresh fodder. Fresh. Shout out to it. Yeah. That's a dip from orange. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Fresh fodder. Fresh fodder. What is it? Taramasalata. Oh, that was the most fancy thing you've ever eaten <laughs> <laughs> up until COVID. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, one of the all time fish foods. eggs, isn't it? It's pretty, it's pretty fancy. No, it is. It's like, yeah, it's like pureed fish eggs. Fish row. I know if I, yeah. No, Whatever. it is fancy, mate. Um, so, Benji, like, you know, I feel sorry for you because you're on a hide into nothing if you're fucking talking about how much you love your family. <laughs> <laughs> This is rugby league. Bro. This is rugby league. Rugby league. No time ben, for that leave shit, that ben. soft shit at the door, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. income. Hey, Fucking hell. Come and have a schooner yeah, with us. Yeah, come have a schooner. Cowboys 21 defeat the Knights 20. Knights will rue a couple of missed opportunities there. Cowboys come over the top of them late in front of their own people up north in Townsville. Um, and then... Storm beat Warriors, Storm Warriors, sucked in Rue. Manly fucking hump the eels. And here we go. This is what I wanted to get to. Yep. And I'm ashamed, genuinely, I'm ashamed of myself, that I was misled so easily. Mm. So easily. Dude. The Dragons come over, a team that historically, were well, at least since 2010, have stunk, and whisper sweet nothings in my ear, and I roll over and present. Yeah, dude, no, we presented to the dragons. Who, I backed I backed up on No, them. yeah, you did. I backed up. Yeah. It was the rugby league community as a whole bent over and backed up on against the dragons. <laughs> and when we got there, what we were expecting was to get filled up and we yeah. backed up onto a flaccid shark. Yeah, I thought I was going to get backed up. Yeah. And filled up. Yeah. But what happened? We forgot that it was the dragons firstly. And then we, even though we said it, we neglected to acknowledge that they beat a Titan side <laughs> who didn't make the finals last year for starters. And no Kieran Foran. No Kieran Foran, no Dave Fafita, no Jaden uh, Campbell. Jaden Campbell. With a new coach. With a new coach. So In round one. Yeah, imagine my surprise when I'm at the Brookvale fucking, what pub's it called? Hotel. Brookvale Hotel yesterday. And I barely... I'm halfway through my celebratory schooner when I look up to the television and see that it's 12 nil to the fish. And then it's like fucking 18, 22. You know how points work. Before you, before you know it, 38 fucking nothing. Zip. 38 zip. The only zip of the weekend. Yeah. Potentially the only zip of the year. The Dragons. I mean, again, now, are you telling me that... Actually, no, not a second. Doesn't matter. A zip. Whatever. Though. Are you telling me that the Mad Dragon live streaming that game would not have absolutely broken rugby league records? Like, I would have been touching myself to that. <laughs> Make it happen, Dragon. Mad Dragon, you mad bastard. 38 nil. Wayne said they'd come out and hump. Well... And hump they hump did. Hump they did. Humped pure and true. What hammer have? Couple? Three. Three. Oh, okay. And, he, and a try saver at the end. Yeah. Hammer goes, fuck you. You all write me off because I don't score one week. Yeah, I know. Comes back and absolutely plows. Hammer, Isarco, Martin Nichols. Was Mark, the biggest oh, miss. That was the biggest miss of all time. Fuck, Where if, idiots, you, if you're a breadcrumb guy or girl, it was Nut Trucker week last week. Shout out to everyone that bought the Nut Trucker hat. They are now sold out. We love your work. We love, we love you. your energy. We love, we love your we love support. You. you keep the lights on here at Hello Sports Studios. Allow us to make free content for the punter and the dribbler. We love you for it. 
Mark Nichols, I said yet yeah, last week on the show, he was my fucking nut tracker of the week. Like, that's who I was, like, putting my money into. Then I got wool pulled by odds, and I ended up putting Sean Kepi in there, who did not look likely. But then when I see Mark Nichols go over in the 47th, I'm like, that's when nuts truckers score. Yeah. In the 47th, just after halftime, that's yeah. when they do their nut work. Truck. That's when they truck nut. That's when they truck nut, in fresh out of, of the sheds, in the dead of night. The sting's been taken out of the game, but they've yeah. also had an orange juice at halftime. Yeah. That's nut trucker territory. Yep. God, I was angry with myself. Eight bucks you could have gone for the big fella. Seven fifty, eight eight bucks. Eight. But he does score tries. He does score tries. Good to see, though. Big Mark getting it done. Yep. Jermaine Asako kicked the lights out, five from seven. Probably not lights out stuff, but he kicked pretty well. Pretty good. Uh, 38 nil. Did I say that earlier? Yeah. 38 nil. 38 nil. Now we start, I reckon we, we, can, we could have a really good spoon off this year. Dragons and Tigers, maybe sprinkling a bit of dog. Like, it's going to be a good battle for last. Yeah. It's going to be a robust battle for last. I will say early signs are looking like a treble spoon for the Tigers. Obviously, we're only two rounds in. Well, they've only played once in fairness. And they've only played once. They did once. get the two points early, which they probably needed. Well, fucking oath. Not they probably. Needed. They definitely needed it. It's a good point, Eddie, you make. I just assumed they lost last weekend, but it was a bye. You do get put two points for a bye in rugby yeah. league. Which pisses Joel Kane off. Yeah, Joel. Joel hates Sugar, it. Sugar doesn't like Sugar that. hates it. Um... Just an absolute wool pull hoodwink from the Dragons. Like, just fooled us all. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fooled mate, people us all. T- mate, people last week, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm just bringing up how people were talking. You, 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 listen to, you listen to people after last week, you think Shane Flanagan's the greatest coach to have ever fucking, you know, picked up a bloody whistle. Coach, a whistle. And Zach Lomax, basically the best player in the comp. Yeah. But all the talk around Lomax wanted to go, like, there's obviously some shit going on there. Um, can we get some just stats from, like, the, the, the players? I just would be interested to see, like, did they, did they do fucking anything? Um, Top performing players, most run meters. Lomax, 185. Sorry, so you went all right. 185, that's, there's some good meters. Now go to the Dragons, the fucking... The go to team stats. Oh, yeah, go to team stats. Yeah, go team stats. Oh, yeah. Set of player stats. 52-48, completed at 74% for the Jags. That'll do it. Um, Run meters, got pumped. Post-contact meters, got... Exact same eaten. amount of runs. That's interesting. Line breaks, 7-5. to five. Tackle breaks, 29-27. Average set distance, 48-89 versus 37. So they didn't, they didn't have much grunt through the middle. No. Kick return meters, 234 versus 107. Good Lord. That's hammer, just plowing. Yeah, plowing. Total passes, dummy heart, kicks. Anyway, point is, we're not X's and O's guys, so we're not going to go too far into this, but you no, got pumped. No, I just wanted to... Oh, fuck, they've even added, like, grubbers into this thing. You got absolutely pumped. 38-0. Did Defensive, I say Defensive, uh, effective tackles. See, they didn't even fucking... seem like they, def- def- they didn't defend that bad. Negative plays. Errors, 13-5. to five. Missed tackles, 29, to the fish is 27. Ineffective tackles, 13 on 13. Tackles made, 3-27, 3-45. Errors, 13 to 5. Penalties, more penalties to the fish, conceded by the fish. They just suck, I think. Well, the uh, the average meters as well, not great. No. So that's the round. That's the round. That's, that's rugby, rugby league, league, baby. That is rugby league. What a game. What a weekend of footy. God damn it, I love rugby league. Time to dribble. Let's dribble. Hey, boys. Can you be there? Kimber Jubilee here. Um, I want to take you back to podcast 435, where a, a man rang up and said, after a night out, he'll come home, either a wank on Pornhub or listen to one of your podcasts. Can confirm, I have fallen into that realm of doing it. Come home catch up on the podcast or have a wank if it will still work but cheers <laughs> okay. good listen good. life's good. about routine yeah uh, I, the only thing I could say is add a good day to that for like to have it the next morning though like so you come home either wank 
all this on podcast. I don't see why you couldn't do both. Why couldn't you do both? Why couldn't you come back, have a wank, and listen to the podcast? There's probably a preferable order there. That, well, that's well. got to be the order. Well, I think you'd have a wank, then you'd listen to the podcast. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then a good day the next morning. Yeah. But routine is key to, to sort of, you know... Uh, success. Success, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, and consistency. You've got to be consistent. Consistently wank, consistently listen to the podcast, consistently have a good day. Correct. If you do all that, you will win. Yeah. It's a great, great dribbler. Great, great to start that off. It was nice. Yeah. I, like, I enjoyed it. Guys, I just want to know if you have a good day when you get home from the night out or if you have a good day when you get home. When you wake up in the morning, thanks. Well, I would I would say, given that the name generally, like it's to it's best to start your day. You with, could you could probably have one when you get home. It's a bit like I mean, it's gonna it's gonna give you energy though. So you don't like if you're like if you're off your head and you're gonna you're gonna knock yourself out, you're probably all right. I, th- I think you're better off just having water when you get home. You could have it though when you get home if you want to. You can have it whenever you want. But you could you could. But I'd be having it. Uh, in the morning to help give you energy for the day per previous one as well. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Bit of a burp popped up there mid, mid, mid bloody combo, mid yard. Yeah, yeah, it did, 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 did yeah. yeah. It certainly did. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you could, you could have one before you go to bed and you could have one when you get up if you need it, if you, if you, know, if you know what I'm saying, if you need it. He could help it it sounded day. like he needed yeah, it. That's how he did, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He fucking needed it, that bloke. There's a dribbler in the DMs about good day. Don't say that when he was like, um, you should like, you should make a yeah, you told a me. thing where it's like you have it the next day. You have like, so it could be another product and call it next day. And I'm like, but that's like what good day is. And he's like, no, but like you could have it like the day after it. And I'm like, that's literally what good day is. Mm. You have good day every day. That's, and then he just stopped replying to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dad too. Tobler, Cody Bryant. So I just listened to the uh, uh, the Royal podcast, and I've got some source apparently, non confirmed. Uh, so not just the missing wedding rings and the Photoshop, but um, apparently William has been cheating since 2018, which falls in line with the time that Harry and William had a big falling out. Kate has now found out that said chick, otherwise known as Rose Harbury or something, is pregnant. Had a mental breakdown and ended up in hospital, and now he's refusing to cooperate with the royal family. Hence why she won't be a photo or video. Her ex-brother-in-law died a couple of days after her visit. Single bullet hole to the head, apparently self-inflicted. Yeah, right. Then William was seen with bruises around his neck. Was it her ex-brother-in-law? Pippa's ex-husband. Who told her the news? So much to unpack, all speculation, but also, where is Rose? She hasn't been seen for months either. There you go, boys. There you go. Oh, Calandra Dribbler here. Get fucked. Pippa Middleton's ex-husband got shot in the head? I'd heard some of what that dribbler was just saying there. Uh, I heard the, like, affair sort of stuff. And then she was like, "Who's Rose Harbury? Hambury or Ham Harbury? Well, apparently like an old an old flame or some shit." I've also heard that it may not be Rose, and it could be like more of a Rick than a Rose that he might have been having an affair with. These are all speculative. Pippa Middleton, like, Pippa Middleton was the smoke show sister at the Royal Wedding. Yeah, I remember I she was that. like that dress, and uh, it yeah, was like holy with great ass fame. Fuck. Yeah, so Thomas Kingston, I I guess he's the ex, uh, died from a traumatic wound to the head. Um, Kingston, a member by marriage of Britain's royal family, who was the husband of Lady Gabriella Kingston and former boyfriend of Kate Middleton's younger sister. Pippa was tragically found dead at his parents' home located in Coswold's village. The 45-year-old was discovered with a catastrophic head injury. Kingston died apparently by suicide, according to an inquest. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't think you want to... So he wasn't even married to her. He wasn't even married to her. That's, that's drawing a that's really, a really, really long, really boat. long boat. Really long boat uh, to infer. I won't be going. I won't be going along with no, that. No, that's too hectic. I won't be going along um, with that at all. Sorry to hear that. That's no, terrible. that's awful. That's awful. Um, I think that it is safe to assume, 
parking or that. Yeah. That something's afoot. Afoot. A miss. The, a miss a in right. the royal family. Something's going on. I was under the impression, and I think the punter and the dribbler were too, that as working royals, quote unquote, which Kate and uh, William are, that they're out and about all the fucking time. Yeah. And not to be out and not to be seen since Christmas, except for one photo of her in the car with her mum, seems highly suspicious. And then a photoshopped photo being released and then them being like, oh, if I can, she's just tweeted out, sorry. Uh, I, tell you what, I, tell, I tell you what, I tell you what, I'll tell you what. The Queen's now no longer with us. She was the glue keeping the whole fucking thing together. Charles is not popular. If his son, William, who was, comes out and he's been doing the fucking dirty mm. on Kate, this whole thing might fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. I, I and like... Because um, then where do you turn? Harry's fucking living in exile in, in Canada. No one likes him. But... No one would like William. The thing is as well... Like George that, is fucking 10. And the rest. But like, the thing with the Harry bit is like, if... And this is so not men's women's weekly, just women's women's weekly. Um, this is glossy stuff. Yeah, this is glossy shit. This is doctor's waiting room sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, that like if they had a falling out because Harry was like, hey, dude, you cheating. You cheating motherfucker. And then they just throw that cunt under the bus. You know what I mean? They're saying like, oh, if, oh, it, so like line, that. if so it lines up with their falling out, but then they've just so made the whole Harry thing has been like a complete fucking piece of shit. But he didn't has he's spoken though, and I don't think he's mentioned any of that. Of course, he's not going to say that. Why? He said everything else. That's not a bad. What's point. the fucking? What's the difference? Well, maybe like a bit of a marriage thing. I don't know if you're not going like, yeah, my brother's fucking cheating on his missus. Like maybe you don't say that. That's a good point. That's a it's that's a big one. Yeah, but he said everything else is the point. He said a fair bit. He certainly hasn't had, uh, he wasn't backwards in coming forwards, whatever the fuck that means. Naughty, naughty William. Mm. If this is true, and it may not be, he may also be getting pegged. Who isn't these days? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. It's a great point. It's a great point. Thomas, Eddie, um, got a question for you. Uh, just had a look, and our good friend Clive Palmer is looking at making the Titanic 2. So I've got a question for Eddie mainly, but I'd love to hear Tom's thoughts as well. Eddie, would you be going on the Titanic 2, should the opportunity arise? Maybe some sort of a sponsorship? Shout out to Karen, maybe they can get you on there. Um, just want to know your thoughts. Cheers, fellas. Yeah, I'd be I'd go, yeah. on no, to go, go on Titanic too. Of course, I'd fucking go on Titanic too, and would film the whole thing. It'd be great. Fucking I probably nice. I'm like I'll be honest with you. There's a bit of superstition that runs through. There's blood. There's blood. I would not be getting the maiden voyage. I don't think for a couple of reasons, mostly because it'd be like full of odd people, and tickets would be a fucking fortune. and like everyone would be lining up the front of the ship to do the fucking Rose and Jack pose. It'd just be a bit much. But the thing is, you'd have to go on the first one if Why? you're not because it's like the same reason. Like you have to be for like you a, would mate. It'd be impossible to get tickets. It'd be fucking. Yeah, I know. But surely it'd be that popular. If the opportunity presented itself. The thing is, I wouldn't want to go on the actual same fucking voyage. It. it well, of course, it's going to take the same voyage. Okay. But surely not. Surely it couldn't happen again. Like fuck that, dude. But isn't there a movie called Titanic Two where they where it, it actually looks it like happened the again? dumbest pile of shit? Our friend who ripped off our Brett Lee story uh, did a very who's that Channel Nine guy again? Mike Dalton. He did a very Mike Dalton story on Channel Nine about the Titanic Two, and he was like acting out scenes. It was ghastly. That's foul. Yeah. Is it going to be a, an exact replica? I believe so. He was like. The classes are going to be the same. Like you're, if you're below deck in in Shitsville, like they're going to have. And I mean, obviously, I'm assuming like you're not going to, they're not going to have rats running around. But like they're serving like the food that was similar down there, and like they're going to have like the dancing and shit at night time. It's all going to be the same. Yeah, Clive's like fuck that. I'm making it exactly the same. Clive is the biggest dribbler. It's like what, like it, a what, such can a you dribbler. Just look up what it was they to, expected to cost. Like what a an absurdly unnecessary thing to do. I'm not against it in any in any way, but there's a lot of like Tasmanian MP largest chocolate fountain about that. 
There's also a lot of mod cons that we've got used to that, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd expect would move the needle in terms of sales and shit. Wi-Fi, TVs. TVs. Wi-Fi. A pool that's fucking not some tiny shit hole. A gym that's got more than like, you know, one of those camels in it. What are they called? Pommel horse? Like a, yeah. I don't, I don't know, know what you're talking about. A Electric camel, camel something. I don't a know. what? <laughs> Sibian? No. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> There's like, they used to have like some sort of camel related workout. Camel? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a fucking sure. camel with humps. <laughs> Let me look it up. Titanic gym camel. equipment. Fucking absurd. I, um, yeah, look, like life jackets that are of a modern standard. Life rafts. Well, they're going to have to have all that stuff. That's what there. I mean, right? Like, you can't just have fucking wooden boats. Well, they, they, You're no, going to have those no, full no, capsule no, pods no, no, that, no. like... They couldn't. Uh, okay. One of the most popular attractions was the electric camel, an exercise riding machine that mimicked the gait of a camel. I told you there was an electric I'm camel. I'm not saying dude. you're wrong. I don't know how that's exercise. You're sitting on a camel. You sit on it and you come. Oh, okay. So it, it was the original <laughs> Sibian. <laughs> No, I actually don't know what the fuck it is. Is it meant for exercise? Electric camel, I'll, I'll type that in. Jesus Christ. Cody, you found anything on the electric camel? Uh, no, I was just looking at the Titanic stuff still. Um, but it does say that this ship is going to be intended to be made to be like an exact replica. Uh, ticket prices have not been announced. That's it. You just sit on it. You just sit on the electric camel. And do what? Must be a workout. I like don't must work your abs or something. Uh, I, I mean, like, I just don't understand how that... I don't understand how that works. Not a big like, not a big electric camel guy. It's evidently not. Dude. Evidently I not. I thought I would have been. Um, what in the fuck? There you go. There you fucking go. All right, let's keep moving. Mm, last one. Sweet. Caroline. Vinacario needs new material. And we can do it again All we want And all we're asking for Is to kick sides out of the NRL In 2024 We could kick them out Listen, Finichario has been on a campaign, a crusade of sorts, to have South kicked out of the competition again. And whilst I don't, you know, I do like South, like in terms of what they bring, obviously they're in some shit right now. I can't do anything but celebrate a man who's passionate and has passions and is going after him and is trying to make a change. And that's what Finichario is doing. Was that him? Had yeah. to be. Had to be. There was a lot of musical talent in that. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. That was nice. And as as, I said, as dribbly as it gets. Yeah. As absolutely rugby league dribbly as it gets. One of the dribbliest things I've ever heard in my life. Yep. And that's saying something. Mm, that is saying it's saying something. The new the musical ensemble there was particularly dribbly. Yeah, it was. It was a feast for the uh, <laughs> a dribbly feast for the ears and the senses. <laughs> Uh, I respect a man who's 
fighting his own fight mm. and crus- crusading his own crusade. Yeah. Good luck to you, brother. Good luck to you. You know what I mean? Like yep. you're up against it. You haven't. You've, you've you've not picked the small club. No, you haven't. One that no one would care if they went. You but know? he has picked a good time. Owen two, coach under fire. <laughs> Sam Burr just kicked out. You know, like yeah. Doesn't seem like players mistreated. Players mistreated allegedly. Allegedly, just alleged. But you know that's what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing. Anyway. Good on Shout you, Shout out to Finichari there. Thanks to all the dribbles. Uh, dribbler hotline number is in our bio on Instagram if you want to call up. Is that us? Yeah, bro. Are we done? Yeah, bro. Fucking oath, dude. See you later, bike. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>